Hey programmers, welcome back. Now that we know about string indexing, let's definitely put this into practice. So what you want to do is pause this video, go down to the link in the description, try to work through these exercises on your own, and then when you get stuck, come back to this video, and I'll walk through every single problem over here. So what you wanna to do to set up your environment is create a folder uh, with this name, then create a small string snippets file inside. So let me go ahead and create that. So I have the string indexing and methods folder. And then inside, I'll create a file for part zero, which we have small string snippets. So let's go over these together. And what I'll do is comment in a few of them at a time. That way we can really focus our attention. So looking at the first one, we have the string promenade and we grab index three of it. And so the only thing you have to remember here is that indices start at index zero. So if I count these, zero, one, two, three, of course, M is going to be at index three. So this one's going to be M. Then looking at the second one, I grab tiger at index one, and that would mean the I here, right? Because again, T has index zero. So I should have M and then I. And then for the last bit here, I have the string wheel and I grab the length of it. So that would just refer to the number of characters that build up wheel, and that would be five characters, right? So that'll be the number five. So let's give this a go. To execute this file, what I need to do is double check that my terminal is right next to this file. So I have to go one level deeper. I have to go into this folder. So I'll do CD that folder. And then from here, now I can run my JS file, right? So node small string snippets dot JS. Nice. So let's keep it rolling. Let's go over the next three in this chunk. So let's look at this first one over here. We already know that wheel.length is going to be five. And so when I subtract one from it, nothing fancy there. It's just going to be four, right? Just some simple arithmetic. Looking at the second one, we have nomad with some different capitalization. When we use a two uppercase method on that, we're going to get back is capital nomad. So that's something fancy. And then for the last one, we have a nice long uh, comparison expression. Bear in mind when we check for equality or any comparison for that matter, what I do is evaluate the left-hand side and then the right-hand side and then check if they're equal. So I need to actually simplify this part. It's actually the case that, hey, programmers at index two would give you back the Y over here. So then I'm just simply checking is Y equal to Y, which I know is a true statement. And so that last one should just be true. So let's run this. I should get four nomad true. Nice, and there we have it. So moving on to the next three, we have a few things here. Looks like I check if volleyball.length is greater than 20, and that's actually not gonna be true, right? So that'll be a nice false over here because there's not enough characters in that one, right? This evaluates to a number, it's gonna be less than 20, so this entire expression evaluates to false. Looking at the second one, we're utilizing the index of method. So bear in mind that here we're checking the index of R inside of treasure. And that should just give me back the first index where R can be found, which would be index one over here. Notice that R appears twice in treasure, but index of will always return the leftmost index. That'll just be one. In a similar way, we find the index of E, which would be at index two, right? Zero, one, two. So we'll try that. Should get false one, two. Nice, there it is. Let's go on to the final three in this snippet. So over here, it looks like we're getting index five out of the string web, but there are not enough characters inside of web. The final index in the string web is going to be index two representing the B. And so whenever you use like an illegal index on a string, you're gonna get back undefined, right? So watch out for that one. And then over here on line 13, we're looking for X inside of red. That is like, what's the index of X inside of red? And that would actually be negative one. Recall that when the string we're looking for is not found inside of the longer string, we get back negative one, which kind of makes sense because negative one is not even a valid index, right? We get back negative one there. And in a similar way, we can't find capital R inside of red because we know that index of is gonna be case sensitive, right? That must be the same case. So that should also get back negative one. So I'll check for undefined negative one, negative one. Nice, and there it is. All right, that wasn't too hard. Let's go on to part one, which is gonna be very similar. I just wanna interpret this snippet once again. So I'll create a separate file called properPatterns.js, and we'll step through this code. And so let me start evaluating this code in chunks. Let's go over the first three console.logs here. So we have a word variable that contains suspension bridge, and then we grab an index out of it. So what is that index for? That's zero, one, two, three, four. So that'd be the E. And then we have some longer uh, expressions here. So whenever you have a longer expression like this, like I always say, right, don't be overwhelmed. Just try to evaluate it in pieces. Looking at this expression, I see an and statement. I know that when I have an and statement, I have to combine the left-hand side with the right-hand side Boolean. So when I evaluate this left-hand side, I'm checking word.length greater than five. That's going to be true because suspension bridge definitely has more than five characters. And I'm also gonna check on the right-hand side, 
if the first character of word begins with D. I know that this will evaluate to false, right? And since my right-hand side evaluates to false, I know that this total expression would evaluate to false because and will only return true when both things are true. Looking at the third one over here, this one would actually evaluate to true because I know that the word has more than five characters and also it begins with S. So I should get E false true for these. Nice, there we have it. Now let's look at these uh, index of expressions over here. And so when we find the index of O inside of this string, that would refer to this O, that would give us the index eight. And I'm checking is eight greater than negative one. And that's a true statement. Looking at this one over here, we're trying to find the index of Z. Z is not found inside of the string. So this left hand side will evaluate to negative one. And I check is negative one greater than negative one, which is a false statement, right? So that would actually give us a false. So I should get true false for these two. Nice. And so by using this pattern of like index of greater than negative one, we're able to check if some like character is within some larger string. If we get back true, that means it was there. If we get back false, that means it's not there. So let's go over the next few over here. So we have the string foggy and here we're just indexing and but we have a nice expression we need to evaluate between the brackets. So naturally between the brackets would evaluate first. And so what I do is grab the string at index three, which would give us the G in particular, this like second G technically. So I'll just write that over here. And then looking at line 10, what we do is grab the last character of that string, right? Just utilizing that classic pattern. So that will just give us the Y. So if you look at this expression, we know that we need to evaluate the brackets first. String dot length would be the number of characters in foggy, which is five. I do five minus one, which is four. I know that the character index four is zero, one, two, three, four is the Y. So let's try that, should get GY. Nice, and now let's bring in the last few lines over here. Looking at line 11, looks like they reassign the string variable to contain day. And notice that there's actually like a little space character at the front of uh, this string. So they print out the string, which I know it's going to be, right? It's going to be just day with a space in front of it. And then from then they print out the length, which should be four, right? Because there are four characters in day if I include that space, right? And then finally, they try to find the index of OGG inside of that string, and it's not going to be found at all. So that should just give us a negative one. So finally, the last three things should be day, four, and negative one. Nice, and there we have it. So I'll begin to set up my environment by creating this dare to decipher file. And so let's take a look at the first three console.logs over here. So we have the phrase string, uh, that's all folks. And then we have a few patterns that reference the length of my string as an index. So looking at the first one, this one's actually gonna return undefined. So do try to recall that the length of a string is always gonna be one greater than its final index because we start counting length at one, but indices at zero, right? So I know that this is gonna be just outside of the range of like valid indices, so that'll be undefined. And then the second console log would actually give me the last character, right? So that gave me just the S over here. And then the minus two would give me the second to last character, give me the K. Hopefully you're picking up on these patterns, right? As you like read code more and more and understand the patterns for what they accomplish, you can read them really quick, right? And so at this point in my understanding, I don't really need to like look at the phrase and count every individual character and how many they are. Instead, I know that in general, phrase.length minus one gives me the last character. So that means that phrase.length minus two must give me the second to last character. So let's try that. I should get undefined SK. Nice, and there it is. Let's move on to the next few over here. So looking at this one, we have a variable i that contains the number nine, and then we actually have another variable called char that I assign uh, the phrase character, right? So if I look at this, I'm really just getting the phrase at index nine over here. So I'll figure out what exactly index nine is. And so if you grab the character at index nine, it's actually gonna refer to this L over here, right? So I'm gonna print out L on line eight. Then I try to find the index of L inside of the phrase. And the little trick here is that because there are multiple L's, right? I know I got this L at index nine. When I try to do phrase that index of L like this, that'll give me eight because I know that index L will always return the leftmost index where that character could be found. So this one will be eight, I believe. And then for the last one over here, we're using some slice syntax. And so when we slice passing in two numbers, we're gonna get a piece of our string beginning at the start index and ending at this end index, but we don't include the end, right? So I'll start at index two, that gives me zero, one, two. So I start slicing at A, and I go up to, but not including index eight. Index eight refers to this L, and so what I end up grabbing in my slice is really everything that I have highlighted right now, right? So there's this bit, and not including that, that L over there. So let's try that, give it a go. 
Cool, and let's go over the last chunk now. In this last chunk, we just have some variations of slicing the same literal string again and again. So looking at the first one, we start at index one, which I know is this B, and go up to, but not including index three. So that's zero, one, two, three. So this should just give me B and C, because remember, again, the end you specify is excluded. Looking at the second one over here, we start slicing at index two, and this is a scenario where they only passed in a single number. So that represents just the start and there is no end. So that means we start slicing at index two, so the C, and because there is no end, I go all the way through the end of my string, so I should get this entire chunk, right? So C through G over here. In a similar way, if I just given four, then I'm just starting at four and going all the way through the end. So that would refer to E through the end. Let's actually just try these three while we're here. Let's see what we get. Nice, EFG, cool, so that looks good. Let's finally go through the last two bits over here. So these are scenarios where we actually give some negative indices. And recall that a negative index when you slice refers to characters starting at the end, right? So negative one refers to the very last character. Negative two refers to the second to last character. But looking at this one, when I say negative one, it's still going to be the ending index. So it must be excluded, right? So this should give me all characters from C up to but not including G, right? So really just this chunk. So we'll try that. Nice, C, D, E, F. And like you probably already expect, now we're just slicing from that starting point again of C all the way up to, but not including the F, right? So this should just be C, D, E. And we'll give it a go. Nice. So that was the last of our exercises where we have to predict how code evaluates. And now I wanna work on part three, which we have a tedious task. And so this one's pretty interesting. This time what we have to do is write our own program to this file called a tedious task.js. Let me just create that file for myself. So there's my file. Let me go ahead and read the prompt. And so what I want to do is write my own program so that it prints out the index where the substring hey, looks like all capital hey, can be found in the text below. And it looks like it's a really long chunk of some random text. And so what I'll want to do is solve this in a programmatic way, of course. And so let me start by just copying this long string that I need to search through. So I have it copied and I'll bring it into my code. And I need to make sure that it's actually valid code in the first place. So this isn't technically a string until I wrap it in some quotes. So now it's a string. And what I'll do is I'll save that to a variable. I'll say, let my string. And I'll be sure to use like a semicolon as well. So I have a really long string variable, but it's totally fine. And then from here, I want to find the index where capital hey can be found. And so if I want to accomplish that, I can just use the index of method, right? And so what I'll do is just write a nice expression. I'll say string dot index of, and I'll look for the index of capital Hey. I know that this will give me back the index where I can find it, and I'll just print that out. So this is nothing too fancy, just practice using uh, index of. So let's give that a run and see what we get. Nice, and I have 483, because apparently hay is found somewhere over there. Let's see if we can find it. So what I can do is, uh, in VS Code, just like many text editors, you can do Control F or Command F, and I can look for hay. And where is that? Oh, there it is, inside of my string. All right, programmers, so that wraps up the entire walkthrough for this D exercise for our expressions and variables. In particular, we went over a lot of indexing patterns. So what I really want you to do before you go on to the next video is make sure you can solve all of these problems on your own. So that means you should be able to predict all of these console.logs and actually feel confident doing it, right? In the next section, we're gonna learn some new material and you wanna make sure you have all of this down pat. So feel free to redo this exercise on your own if you need to, but I'll be waiting in the next video.